Now, don't say what's your hurry. Yeah, and don't ask us where the fire is. And you guys see me wave at you? Well, we waved back, didn't we? Yeah, he did like this. I... Shut up. You broke a traffic law. Well, can't you make another one? I'm going to give both you guys a ticket. Well, be sure they're down front. My partner doesn't see very well. Yeah, my glasses. Don't oh, try to kid me. It's guys like you that keep us cops busy. Don't you ever think of accidents? 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 Oh, my dear man, that's our business. Uh, <laughs> allow me. Accident. My card. My card. Boswell and Gansey. Insurance, eh? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, this is Mr. Boswell. Mr. Boswell, shake hands with Mr. Policeman. I'm pleased to meet you. And this is Mr. Gansey. Mr. Gansey, shake hands with Mr. Police. I'm pleased to meet you, sir. I'm pleased to meet you. Now, here's a policy that offers triple protection against bruises, earthquakes, and relatives. Have you ever stopped to realize that old age is creeping up on you? My dear man, you owe it to your wife. I haven't got a wife. We'll get you one. Yes. Now, uh, I would like to ask you a few questions. Uh, how's your liver? What? Now, don't tell me you haven't got a liver. But I don't need any insurance. You are just the type that does need insurance. Well, do you realize that since 1910, they have discovered 52 new ways of dying? Uh, and you don't look well. Yes, why, uh, uh, people are dying this year that have never died before. Well, what kind of insurance do you do? Any kind. Now, answer me, answer me. In the morning when you get up, do you sort of have an empty feeling in here? Uh, come to think of it, I believe I do. Just as I thought. Gallstones. Ah, another prospect. And what a prospect. Hey, give her sales talk number seven, and don't come back without a policy. Now then, where were we? Oh, yes, around the gallstone area. My man, do you realize that you've got enough gallstones to start a quarry? Hello. Hello. Are, um, are we holding you up? Yes, and I'm awfully angry about it. Ah. Uh, what's your name? Mary. Mary Marsh. Mary? Gee, that's a swell name. My name is Wilbur. I don't mind. Now, uh, let's see your tongue. Say ah. Ah? Just as I thought. You reached me just in time. Has it got a coat on it? Not only a coat, but a vest and a pair of pants. You know, Mary, you're the kind of a girl that I could... Hey! Number seven! Have you ever stopped to realize that old age is creeping up on you? What are you talking about? Protection. That's what you need. Throughout your declining years, you will need to be provided for, and I am here to offer you that protection. Well, that's awfully nice of you, and, and, and I think you're... Well... You have to let me think it over for a while. Oh, that is the trouble with America today. Procrastinate. Procrast... Uh, why give it up? Accept my proposition now and know the value of a steady income and the happiness of a contented family. Well, I just met you, and I think I could like you an awful lot, and, and I think we could be awfully happy together, and, well, I might accept your proposal, but... Well, you'd have to ask Mother anyway. Now that I've signed this policy, suppose I got double pneumonia. Oh, then you would be lucky. Lucky? Certainly. Because then you'll get a great bargain. Instead of dealing with you in the singular, we pay you off in the pleurisy. Oh, I see. <laughs> Good luck. You'll need it. I'm certainly glad I met you, fellas. Mary, I want you to meet my partner, Mr. J. Addington Gansey. This is Mary Marsh. How do you do? Fidget the digit, honey. Fidget the digit. You know, I love the name of Marsh. It's so mellow. <coughs> has, uh, has my partner been telling you about wonderful insurance? Oh, is that what he was talking about? Well, not exactly. You see, I, uh... Tell us something about yourself, Mary. Well, I'm running away from home. No. Yes. You see, it's like this. My mother made millions out of oil. Oh, tell me about it, child. Tell me about it. But she lost most of it. Tell him about it, child. Tell him about it. But why are you running away? Oh, because my mother wants me to marry our attorney, John Blackwell. You did right, Mary. But where are you running to? 
to my hotel. Oh, your hotel. Oh, your hotel. Yes, the Ripstein La Riviera at Floralhurst. Now, my plan is to go down there and operate it myself, make it success, and then I can be independent. And you're perfectly right. All you need is a couple of good men like us to help you out. And are we good men? <laughs> we are now in the hotel business. Gee, that's grand. Boy, that's what I call exhilarating. What? Exhilarating. Exhilarating. I'll have to look that up. Exhilarating. Let's be off. Wait a minute. Do you boys know anything about hotels? Oh, do we know anything about hotels? Oh, child, there are several hotels looking for us right this very minute. What's the matter? You ought to guess? No. This is a hotel. <laughs> Pretty, isn't it? Show place, I call it. Show place. John Blackwell certainly was lying. I think it's a shame the way he left this hotel run down. Yeah, it's run down all right. You know, it's supposed to be early Victorian. <laughs> Very early. Uh, too early. Mother said that all the big bugs used to live there. They're probably still here. Let's look around. This looks like the place that fella King Tut was buried. Buried? Looks more like the place where he was born. Where did you say you got this hotel? My uncle gave it to me. Honey, you've been robbed. <laughs> robbed is right. Oh, come on, Addington. Let's look around. We might be able to put it over. It would be easier to push it over. Is it a mummy? No, it's Father Time's grandfather. Boy, boy. Come, come, my good man. Wait, wait. Let's see who's registered here. General Grant, Lydia Pinkham, Buffalo Bill. <laughs> quite a cast, quite a cast. You think they're still here? They are if they left a call with him. <clears throat> ah! The morning paper. Oh, boy. Wait till they hear what Dewey did at Manila Bay. You'd better waken the old man. He may be dead. Boy, boy, this is becoming irksome. Come, come. Come on, lunch. Hey. Lunch? Kansas City, all out. Lad? This young lady here has placed us in full charge of the Hotel Ritz de River, and we intend to place it where it belongs. Now, <clears throat> our first innovation is to uh, be the inauguration of the eight-hour day. Eight hours in the morning and eight hours in the afternoon. Uh, that don't help me any. I'm the night man. That's all right, little one. I'm here. Who's our guest? Why, he ain't no guest. He's the house detective. I'm afraid the thing is a bust. Come on, let's sign off. Oh, boys, we've got to think of something. 
Gee, it would be wonderful if we could do something with this hotel. Wonderful? It would be miraculous. It would make a swell fire. Wait a minute. I've just given birth to an idea. My, how you must have suffered. Listen. Now listen to knowledge. What this hotel needs is publicity. I'll send a story to all the leading newspapers saying the society has adopted the hotel as a fad. In two weeks' time, this old birdcage will be on the map. Now, top that one if you can. Now, you two just go on back there, sit down and relax, and I'll telephone the good news to the newspapers. <laughs> That's the idea. Just relax. Hello, Central. Sorry to disturb you. <clears throat> Connect me with the editor of the New York Examiner. A chair, son, so that I may be able to sit and think. Hello, editor of New York Examiner. Uh, this is Gansey speaking. Gansey, of Gansey, Gansey, and Gansey. Operators of the world's greatest hotel. <laughs> we have recently taken over the uh, Hotel Ritz de la Riviera at Floralhurst. And we are making it the mecca of society. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why, at this very moment, one of the world's greatest painters is busy redecorating. Uh, we have installed the safest safe in the world. Yes, yes. So that society may come here and feel that their jewels will be absolutely safe. <laughs> yes. Uh, Why, our register already carries some of the world's most prominent names. And one man is here with his wife. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, I know you will. Yes, I... Right. Well, boy, how's that? <laughs> That's telling them. Boy, I never fall down on anything. <laughs> Society's a new fad. The hotel risked it off. Well. The rendezvous of wealth and fashion. Rendezvous. I don't believe it. The rendezvous, the hope pearls. Well, it looks as if Mary were getting somewhere, even if she did run away. That story is absurd. As your attorney, I can't sanction this crazy business. You can't sanction wealth and fashion flocking to the rich. Ah, oh, nonsense. Mary has probably fallen into the hands of some very clever confidence men, and she'll doubtless wind up for losing her hotel. Listen. Anything that happens at that hotel will be an improvement. Yes? Well, what about something that may happen to Mary? I never thought of that. <laughs> no. Well, I haven't thought about anything but Mary. You know how much I love her. No, I already have told me often enough. Hmm? What are your plans? I'll go there at once, throw those men out, and bring Mary home where she belongs. Uh, you're optimistic. You don't know Mary. Now, well, don't worry. I'll settle this. That is, if you'll back me up. Back you up? I'll be right behind you. In fact, I'll go along with you. Well, all right. I'll meet you here at 12. Can you imagine? I got it all set to marry the girl, take over the property, and a couple of half-smart guys come along and mess up my plans. You ain't afraid of them, are you? No. I'm just apprehensive. If they find out about our hideaway in the hotel basement, we're lost. Hey, let's get down there and take them for a ride. Or put them on the spot. Well, my motto is give them the pineapple. It never fails. All right, Mac. You get down there as quickly as you can. But don't do any shooting till you see me. All right. This looks like pie for us, boys. Now remember, you're going to mix with the best people, so watch your step. And the first guy that says ain't gets a sock in the nose. But I'm going to send the Duchess down to try and wiggle the combination out of those two birds that are running the joint. Now listen, Spagoni. You go on down ahead and look the joint over. We'll meet you there. Sure, Chief. The Duchess is one of the cleverest wives I ever had.
Hello? Oh, how are you, Duke? Yes, I was just reading the story. Rather expected your call. Sounds great. Okay, I'll go down first and meet you there. Right. Goodbye. I thought you were dead. Take a glass of water to room 16. She drink? No, the lady wants to make a high dive. Say, you know I'm not as big a fool as I used to be. Have you been dieting? Uh, this is the Hotel Ritz de la Riviera. Yes, just a moment. Oh, Mr. Gansey. Yes, Mr. Boswell. A gentleman in Cincinnati wants to know if the fish are biting. If they are, they're biting each other. They're hungry. No, they're not hungry. Yes? How are you, sleuth? All right. That young fellow's a human dynamo. <laughs> yes. Everything he has on is charged. You know, uh, things ain't so quiet around here no more. I may decide to quit. In that case, we require two weeks' written notice. Well, I can't write. Then that settles that. Now, uh... Go upstairs and count the chambermaid. And uh, report to me every now and then. Every now and then? Every now and then. Every now and then. Thank you. Look, more telegrams. Gosh, if this keeps up, we'll have to build an annex to this hotel. Gee, it's a long time since I've seen you. Yes, almost an hour. And you still like me? More than ever. More than ever, body? More than any body. Now, let's don't go into that. Here, here, read some telegrams. Here's one from Harold Van Asterville. He wants two rooms and four baths. <laughs> the man's a channel swimmer. Listen to this one. Reserve wedding suite for myself and friends. Also, room for the wife. <laughs> That's what I call breaking them in. <laughs> ah, customers. Be alert, lad, be alert. Ah. Greetings, greetings. And salutations. How you do, gentlemen? Have you the reservation for the Duchess Bessie Van Essie? Why, you're the kind we throw them out for. Will you register, Bessie? <coughs> oh, you are so kind. <laughs> How do you spell Bessie? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> I, I, I'm so sorry, pardon. You see, your American English, it is so different. Yes, yeah, so is our Scotch. <laughs> what, uh, what kind of a room would you like, Duchess? What kind of a room would you like? I should like a room in which I can amuse and cogitate. Suppose I give you one where you can see as a robot. <clears throat> you mean to tell me you'll never cogitate? Not while I'm on duty, madam. Not while I'm on duty. Look that word up, will you? Cogitate. I-J-K. Cogitate. Cog, cog. Cogitate. Uh, would you like a room with or without? I will leave everything to you. <laughs> She's going to leave it all. <laughs> He's my partner. You'll have to give me half. Son, son, can't you see that we're in conference? Return to your cogitating. I hate that word. Cogitating. Is this the wonderful safe I have read so much about? Yes, yes. Would you care to look it over? Oh, that would be very, very interesting. Well, step this way, madam. Step this way. There you are. It's a 1932 model, seven bearing crankshaft. No tin there. Hydraulic brakes, all wool in the yard wire. Is it burglar proof? It is so far. A very fine safe indeed. I shall probably look into it later. Oh, you must, you 
Right upstairs. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with that dame? Nothing. The lady is simply eccentric. I'll show her up. I trust you will forgive my partner, Duchess. You see, uh, he falls for every pretty girl he sees. <laughs> I could not refuse you anything. You are so fascinating. Yes, I suppose so. You know, Duchess, sometimes I think it's a curse. Oh, by the way, is it customary to dress for dinner here? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We dress for all meals here. It gets a little drafty around sex. <laughs> Ten thirty and all's well. Did you hear that? Even the chief himself says it all is well. Oh, I don't believe anything I hear these days. Honey, you're gonna believe me. Greetings, my friend. Greetings. And salutations. <laughs> I'd like a sweet. Certainly, certainly. Something modern or comfortable. Or something high up. Something high up. Would $30 a day be high enough? Quite satisfactory. May I register? Certainly, sir. Certainly. Uh, Democrat or Republican? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Switzerland. <laughs> oh, well, you love it here. Our radiators yodel all night. <laughs> I like a room with a good exposure. You want a room with exposure? Are we going to allow that here? Certainly. Your stupidity is stupendous. 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 F stoop. Stoop. Not that way. Not that way. S T double O double A. Hey. Is that the famous safe I read about? Oh, uh, yes, yes. That's our safe. <laughs> well, I got a lot of valuable jewels with me, and I'd like to look it over if it's in order. Why, well, certainly, sir. It's always in order. Will you step this way? Very sturdy looking safe, I should say. In what uh, compartment will my valuables be kept? Here's where we keep all the valuable jewels, sir. Very, very interesting. I'll send my jewels down later. Good, good. Our safe will always be open to you. Thanks. My word, there's going to be trouble around here. Come on, boy. Just a few samples from my father's factory. He manufactures lawnmowers. It's a great mower, all right. Here, boy. Come on. Do you really think that fellow's all right? Don't give it a thought. Society people are simply eccentric. He's a big shot. Big shot. He's a whole arsenal. Eleven o'clock and all's well. Honey, do you remember the other night, in that moonlight night when we were in the boat? Huh? Hey, do I? It, it wasn't. <laughs> Mother! Well, I'm glad you admit it. After trying so hard to run away from me. Who's this odd looking person? Well, uh, this is Wilbur Boswell, Mother. Oh, it is, is it? Well, I don't like his looks. Reminds me of your father. I'm pleased to meet you. Yeah, you just think you're pleased to meet me. Mary, you've made a great mistake and embarrassed your mother dreadfully. Oh, but Mr. Boswell here and his friend Mr. Gamsey are wonderful hotel specialists. And, Mother, they're going to make us a fortune. I see. 
Good afternoon, folks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Are you being taken care of? Are you? There will now be a slight pause for station announcement. This is my mother, Mr. Gansberg. Oh, well, that's different. How are you, Mother? How are you? How are you? And Mr. Blackwell. Well, fidget the digits, old pal. Fidget the digits. You're going to love us around here. You're going to love us. Are you the mother of that beautiful child? Yes, I am. <laughs> well, sir, do you know that I have never seen beauty so perfectly transplanted? Oh, Mr. Pansy. Yes. Hey, not Pansy. Gansy. Gansy. Look. Ga. Ga. <laughs> is that your little boy? No. Mr. Blackwell is my attorney, and is to be my future son-in-law. Oh, yes. I guess Mary will have something to say about that. Uh, uh, You know, Mr. Pansy. Ga. Ga. You know, Mr. Gaga, I must be very careful of my daughter's social standing. Oh, yes. One must have a social position nowadays. Uh, I have a better a job. <laughs> you know, I've always thought that maybe we should marry a man of me. Oh, by all means, Mrs. Marsh, by all means. And you should do the same. Oh, Mr. Pansy, your frankness frightens me. <laughs> Are you married? So, I got this way from riding a bicycle. I think I'll register. <laughs> you think you'll register, <laughs> you little mugwump? <laughs> I want a large room. You'll need it. What's that? I say we got some nice open ones. Come on, Mother. I'll show you your room. You know. I think you're a man with charm and intellect. You'd make a great success at this hotel. If it wasn't for him. I'll see you later. Have a boy show me my room. Uh, certainly, certainly. Your room number will be uh, 28. 28. Now, if you wish anything else, just ring a towel. You're both delightfully unfunny. You're going to wipe out our business with those towel jokes. It won't be long now. Do you really think that Mary will have to marry that fellow? I suppose she will. It's customary. She. But I'm in love with Mary. You've got to do something about it. For instance, what? If I could think, I wouldn't ask you. But if you're a pal of mine, you'll do something. I got it. Listen. I'll marry Mrs. Marsh. Then I will be Mary's father. When that happens, I'll give my consent to your marriage to my daughter, which will make you my son. It's a little involved, but it'll work out all right. Paddington, you don't mean to tell me you'd marry that battleship? Certainly. That's a lot of woman, boy. A lot of women. Look, boy, we're getting the cream of society. Good afternoon, my good man. What good can we do for you? Nice weather we're having. That is, for a small town like this. <laughs> I am the Duke of Winchester. I would like a very expensive room. You'll get it. Ah, I see my wife is here. Your wife? Yes, in 24. Oh, yes, in 24. That was six years after the war. Is, uh... Yes, that's our little safe. A marvelous piece of furniture. And now, if you don't mind, I'll go to my room. I don't mind a bit. You just run right along. Look at this. Why, it couldn't be him. It couldn't be, but it is. Wait a minute. I'll ask him. I beg your pardon, sir. Is that you? <laughs> my, oh, my. I do wish they would catch this scoundrel. Well, you know, the police are not so hot around here. No, they? no. They're very lackadaisical.
I'm getting sick of this. Lack, 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 lack. Hell, hell, hell. You know, I've been mistaken for him many times. It's most annoying. Oh, yes, I should say it must be. What right has he got running around looking like you anyway? Rather a peculiar coincidence. Say what? Very peculiar. Yeah. Uh, it must have been two other fellows. Yes. Yes. It must have been. I'll show you up. Personally, sir. I'm honored. Mr. Gandy seems very intelligent. But if that other person had another brain, he'd still have just one. Oh, Mother, I think you're all wrong about Wilbur. He has such a sweet personality <laughs> and the man you can trust. Nonsense. John Blackwell's the man for you. He's wealthy, worldly, and wise. Oh, my love, you are here. We oui, must share, and I like it very much. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so sorry. Do bring the luggage in. I think he knows the combination of the safe. What do we do? Dominate him. Wear him down. Take your cues from me. Beat it. I'll get him. Can I do anything else for you? Yes. I am starving. Well, I'm a little hungry myself. But I am starving for love. Love? Stop! Come over here. No. Will you come over here? Why, certainly. Now, put your arms around me. Put your arms around me. Now, make love to me. Ah. Uh, make love to me. You mean for me? Make love to me. I simply would not be mother-in-law to such a person as Wilbur Boswell. I don't care. I love him, and I'm going to marry him. Ooh. Well, there's your Romeo making Juliet. Oh, he, he must be sick or something. Yeah, well, something is right. Now, I want you to do something. Oh, now, Duchess, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen. My husband stole my mother's wedding ring. Tonight he will put it in the safe. I must have that ring back. And I want you to give me the combination to the safe. But I don't know the combination. Don't lie to me. Honest. My partner's the only one who knows it. Go down and get it from him. Well, I'll try. But he's the tightest guy I ever saw. Wait. What is the matter? Duchess, do me a favor. What? Please don't tell anybody about this. Is there another woman in your life? Only Mary. No. You see, that is I... Uh... Mary? If I find this Mary or any other woman making love to you, I'll kill her. So will I. Mary! Don't talk to me. I saw him 
arms of that woman. Oh, but Mary, I... Oh, gee, Mary. Honey. Oh, now, wait a minute, Mary. Honest, Mary, will you let me explain? Oh, will you leave me alone? Make love to me. Oh, Wilbur, I do love you, but I don't trust you. I know, honey. I can explain everything. It'll take a long time, but I can do it. Are you sure there, there's no other woman? Positive, precious. Oh, Wilbur, I'm so happy. Oh, my. And, and you promise we'll never have another quarrel? I swear. Uh, knock on wood. Honey, we'll never have another argument again as long as we live. You get out of here. Go on, get out. Why, how dare you make love to me? I never saw her before in my life. Positively, Duchess, why, she's a perfect stranger to me. Go on, get out of here. Go on. Duchess, why are women weak for me? Get that combination. Yes, sir. Do you think he'll get the combination to the safe? I doubt it. Well, then you'll have to vamp the other fellow. All right, all right, I will. Mr. Bartle, Mr. Gansey, that Mr. Blackwell and a gang of crooks are plotting in room 28. There you are, Addington. What did I tell you? <laughs> I'll go upstairs and get an earful of what they're saying. And I'm going with you. Well, it's worse than I thought. The girl is in love with one of them. It looks like the old lady's going to fall for the other one. Hmm. So it seems like our work is cut out for us. Yeah. Which, Chief? The thin one's Gansey. The other one's Bodwell. Nice boys. Just the type I like. <laughs> you see, you're all wrong. They're very fond of us. They are? Certainly. Let's, uh, let's put them on the spot. No. I think we ought to take them for a ride. <laughs> all right. We'll take them for a ride. <laughs> They're going to take us for a nice long ride. They are? Yeah. I hope it don't rain. After the ride, I'll give them each a nice, juicy pineapple. <laughs> what? Just what? What? They're going to give us each a nice, juicy pineapple. They are? Yeah. Oh, and I just love pineapples. Hey, I wonder if I could get them to change mine to a grapefruit. They're juicier. You can ask them. I will. Listen. <laughs> what? Never put off until tomorrow what you can do today. 
I got you. Which only goes to prove that you were full of fears and foolish fancies. You're right, Addington. I feel so badly about this thing. I think I'll go in and hide. Good. You go hide and I'll go see. All right. Go ahead. And I'll give you an extra hundred for the job if you do it nice and clean. Don't worry. I used to be a dry cleaner. Hi, <laughs> Betty. Oh, uh, could you help a lady in distress? In distress? Quicker than any other dress. What, uh, what seems to be the difficulty? I can't get the cork out of a bottle. Oh, well, then you have stopped the right man. My first job was in the bottling works. I was a corker. Oh, I just knew you were a man of force. Not only a man of force, but a mass of muscle, Duchess. Feel that. Not so hard, Duchess. Not so hard. <laughs> well, here's to me. <laughs> You know, this stuff makes you see double and feel single. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mr. Gansey, you're one of the cleverest men I have ever met. <laughs> That's nothing. I'm one of the cleverest men I ever met. <laughs> <laughs> a man with a brain like yours really should be psychic. Psychic? Now, let's see. Who is he? Oh, a psychic person is one who is so mentally keen that they can read another person's mind. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. wow. Mm. As a matter of fact, I'm a bit psychic myself. No. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to demonstrate? Certainly. Go ahead and psych. <laughs> I love demonstrations. Go ahead. Psych around a while. All right. You think of something, and I will read your mind. <laughs> well, that's a lot of reading matter, Duchess. A lot of reading matter. <laughs> Be very careful what you think of. I may surprise you. <laughs> well, in that case, maybe I better think of something else. <clears throat> now, let's see. What will I think of? What will I think of? You know, I got a lot of big things on my mind. What will I think oh, of? Almost anything. Say the combination of your wonderful safe. The safe? Okay, shoot, shoot. The numbers you are thinking are 4, 7, 11, 19. <laughs> well, you missed. That's one on you. <laughs> oh, I'm very far. Very far. <laughs> Why, you missed a mile. You're not psyching so well, don't you? <laughs> what is the combination? The combination of the safe is 10, 20, 30, 30. Oh, 10, 20, 30, 30. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 30. <laughs> 60 and all. <laughs> it certainly is strange. I must be tired from traveling. Yes, I suppose so. Perhaps I'd better take a little nap. Did you say nap or nip? <laughs> well... Here's to better readings and weaker minds. And now, if you will excuse me, I think I will go rest in the arms of Morpheus. Does he register to here? I'll have to look him up. <laughs> I'm glad we became so well acquainted in such a short time. <laughs> well, you know, Duchess, I'm, uh, I'm kind of easy to know when you know me. You are rather easy. Hey, listen, Duchess. Do me a favor, will you? Don't read my mind now. Old Will. Hey. Keep your eye on a guy named Morpheus. Yeah, beat that for nerve. McKay and his gang. That's the most unethical mob in the racket. Yeah. They don't know what it is to be square. Why, there ain't an honest man among them. Well, son, how's it now? How's it now? Fine. That's good. Here's that nice Mr. Blackwell. Well, 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 Mr. Blackwell. We certainly are delighted to have you in our midst. Hello. <clears throat> this, uh... Party you're having tonight. What time does it start? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock sharp. And don't fail to be there. It'll be something to tell your children about. 
be sure and be on the spot. <laughs> on the spot? Ah, now, Mr. Blackwell. Of course, we know that this is supposed to be a surprise, but uh, I can't resist the temptation to tell you that we know all about that delightful little thing that you're planning for us tomorrow. <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> a little birdie. <laughs> Don't listen to this. Ah, <laughs> oh, shut. We know you're going to take us for a ride in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget those pineapples. <laughs> we love them, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> yeah, you know, we do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Ah, the party is in progress. So it is. <laughs> Will you uh, play the carnation with me? I don't mind. Look, the 20th century is just pulling in. Oh, Stanley, I've been turning you over my mind all evening. <laughs> Do tell. Well, I'm nonplussed, tiny, nonplussed. <laughs> Will you excuse me? You have no idea how easy that will be. <clears throat> Too bad isn't twins. Make a great set of bookends. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you look charming this evening, charming. <laughs> oh, Mr. Ramsey, I do hope you'll give me some of your time during the party. <laughs> Darling, I shall always be within a stone's throw. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lovely stone. Stone? It? It's a monument. <laughs> Come, let us march and murmur. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, I would pay you. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I said, would you like to go for a tramp in the woods? <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> you know, I feel like a wild oat going out to be sowed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be alone. Yeah, you're not scared, are you? No, no. But I must be careful of my social status. Well, sit down and nobody will notice it. Tell me, how did you make your vast fortune? Cattle, girly, cattle. Uh, down in dear Oklahoma. Down dear old Cimarron Way. Ah, oh, the great open spaces. So different from New York. Oh, New York is all right. But I like Boston better. It's more like Grand Rapids. <laughs> Your ranch must be gorgeous. Oh, it is, honey, it is. Do you know that my ranch is so swell that we don't have the cattle branded? No? No. We have them engraved. <laughs> Tell me, uh, what motor car do you use? Well, right now I'm using two. No. Mm, an Austin and a Ford. Ah. But I'm putting the big car up for the winter. <laughs> you know, I'll just bet you've got a seat on the stock exchange. Seat? <laughs> I've got a Morris chair. I did have a hammer, but I got rid of it. <laughs> tell me, tell me, what are your views on love? I have no views. I just love. Oh, I just knew you were that way, you little devil. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, Tweetum, <gasps> are you unmarried? Uh, quite often. You know, I shall never forget my second husband. Your second husband? Yes. We met by accident. Mm. He ran over my first husband with his car. Oh, sort of a run-down condition, as it were. <laughs> yes. Well, what happened to him? Oh, uh, he died very mysteriously. Is that so? Yes. You know, I was put out for over a year. Put out? Yes. You mean you were put in, don't you? <laughs> oh, no. Ah, but it wasn't long before I met my third husband. Your third? Yes. <clears throat> oh, yes, yes, the third. <laughs> and, uh... What happened to, uh, number three? Oh, uh, he was poisoned. Poisoned? Yes. Excuse me, I'll see you later. Come. You know, you remind me of my third husband. Oh, I remind you of the third husband. Yes. You're so keen. You're so alert. You're so alive. 
Yes, and I'm going to stay that way, too. You must come, Oh, I must tell you about my fifth husband. Your fifth husband? Yes. <clears throat> now, wait a minute, honey. Wait a minute. You jumped a husband on me. <laughs> what happened through number four? Uh, I don't remember him. Oh, you don't remember him? No. Hmm. No. No, he was nondescript. Oh, I see. One of those foreigners, yes. huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Ah, but I shall never forget my fifth husband. Well, lay it on, honey. Lay it on. What happened to number five? Uh, he went to bed with spinal men and Jesus. Say no more, baby. Say mm. no more. You know what I'm going to do? No. I'm going out and look for a good undertaker. <laughs> oh, come back here. Come here. I was only fooling. I was only putting you to the test. I wanted to find out whether you were brave and strong. Then you're not old lady Bluebeard yourself? No. You haven't had all those husbands? Certainly not. Oh, well, then I can speak freely. Uh, Honey, you appeal to me. Oh. As a matter of fact, you're mad oh. at me. You're the biggest thing in my life. Oh. Will you marry me and be my widow, our wife? Addington. Rebecca. Oh. Ten o'clock and all's well. Well, Gansey and Boswell are confidence men. Crooks. They are not. Whatever Wilbur Boswell is, he's not a crook. Well, perhaps not. But I don't think they'll be here tomorrow. Why do you say that? My information comes from a very reliable source. I still don't believe it. Supposing they do disappear tomorrow. Will you marry me? Well, 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 folks, I certainly am glad to see you entering into the spirit of the occasion. Come on, John, let's have a dance. Addington has something to talk over with me. Addington? Yes, Addington. Addington. Come on. So long, Mother. See you around. <clears throat> what in the world are you and Mother talking about? Your mother and I have just been laying a few domestic plans. You see, uh, we've decided to get married and end it all. Married? Yes, yeah, so you may now consider me your papa. Come, child. Sit. But I'm not sure I want you for a papa. What? Why, I'll make the finest little father that you ever had in your life. And if you're a good little girl, I may allow you to marry Wilbur. But I don't want to marry Wilbur now. Why, daughter? Why? Well, because he has a complex. That's all right. I'll make him trade it for a sedan. No, no. I mean... He has another sweetheart. He has? Why, the scoundrel. I'll teach him to trifle with my little gal. Hey! What's the idea? I'm fixing it for you. Fixing it? You're chiseling, that's what you're doing. Don't pay any attention to that man, Daddy. What is this thing called love? I hope you do marry your mother and she falls on you. I'm going out to do something desperate. Daddy, what makes him so wicked? He isn't wicked, daughter. He's weak. Do you think he loves me more than the Duchess? <laughs> Why, honey, he wouldn't trade you for all the Duchess in Holland. What do you think I should do? Well, now that I've given my consent, I think you ought to look him up and tell him that everything is hotsy-totsy. Gee, but you're going to make a granddaddy. A granddaddy? Ten thirty, and all's well. If all's well now. I'd hate to see anything go wrong. What's ailing you? I think I'll commit suicide. Say, that's the best idea you've had since you came here. Here. Try that. Do you suppose I could hit my brain? Well, you... You'll have to be an awful good shot. 
Oh, Wilbur, please forgive me. Daddy told me the truth about that duchess. You're just in time, honey. I was going to kill myself. I can't live without you. I can't live without you either, Wilbur. Honey, let's not go on the patio. Sit up here a minute. I want to talk to you about our future. Honey, we're going to put this hotel over. Then we'll be married. We're going to have a yacht, summer and a winter home, two automobiles, and, uh... Yeah? A motorcycle. And maybe... I'll split the difference with you. Okay. I think we'd better call the party off until tomorrow night. Oh. I would like to place my jewels in the safe. Rare judgment, Duchess. Rare judgment. I'll do the same. An excellent idea. Oh. I'm not sure about this safe business. You're never sure about anything. Follow me, folks, and I'll open the safe for you. Boy. Go upstairs and light some of those oil lamps right away. Wilbur, oh, you open the safe. I'll collect the jewels. Now, we have a little envelope for you, folks. So all you have to do is place them in there and tear off your feet. Very late to say, They're putting them in a box. Come on. Let's get into our working clothes. Hey, hey, boys. Come on, let's get going and beat that Duke and his gang to it. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Now, you have them sealed tightly, have you? That's fine. Now, you can go to sleep and rest easy. Good night. Good night. Oh, you want us to keep that for you? Certainly. Good night, old boy. Sleep tight. Hey, Sherlock. All's well. Yes, and we want to keep it that way. Come here. <clears throat> you 
see this safe? Well, it's crammed full of valuable jewels. Is it? Is it? I'm telling you. And it's your duty to keep your eye on it all night. Don't take your eye off of it. Okay, Chief. Leave with the ring. Don't make any mistakes. Right. Two of us will go down the back stairway. Spike, you keep us covered from the other end of the balcony. Now listen, boys. We've got to work fast. Help yourself to the stuff in the safe. But the main thing is Gansey and Boswell. Get them. That's Dizzy's job. You take care of them. All right. I'm going to stick around on the balcony. And if anybody butts in, I'm going to pop them. I think I'm right when I say you're wrong. Why? I hear noise. That's static. It's burglars. Lots of them. Will you go back to sleep? We've got to get up early tomorrow afternoon. I'm going downstairs and get those jewels and put them under my pillow. All right, go ahead. But I remain right here in this nice, comfortable bed. Well, I'm going down. And I'm going with you. What are you putting that hat on for? I might catch cold in my head. Well, that would be something. Careful, son, careful. I think you damaged that vase. It's vase, Addington, vase. I looked it up this morning. Well, have it your own way. Come on. Stick your hands up. Gee, you scared me. <laughs> For a minute, I thought it was a burglar. Keep those hands up. Me too? Yeah, you too. What's the big idea? If you're lucky, you'll read about it in the paper in the morning. We don't take the paper. Do we, Addington? Shut up. I don't think it's safe here. Daisy's he's got a cigar.
I'm smoking too much anyway. Come on, let's get out of here. I think they got me. Where? Now you'll have to travel on your stomach. They almost got me that time. They must be firing from the basement. Yeah. They're getting closer. Closer? They're right on our heels. Get a rat. Great idea. Look. Say, that was great. Where'd you learn that? I came from Davenport. Hey. What? Get up and reconnoiter. I don't have to. Reconnoiter. Look around. Look around. Get Gansley and Boswell? Get them, no. Say they're two of the toughest guys I ever seen. What do you mean? What do I mean? I mean they're down the lobby with a machine gun. Pumping them off faster than they did in no man's land. Now listen, Izzy. I'm not going to lose the stuff on the girl on account of those two numbskulls. Now you go downstairs and don't come back until you've nailed them both. Not me, Blackie. I'm leaving. Swine. Go down and get them myself. over that safe. We'll take the bus. I gonna ride. Take the lower berth. Okay. Huh? Wait a minute. 
Can you run this thing? Certainly. It's a standard shift. Go. Go. Good man. Yeah, he's watching things all right. You light a match. I'll work the combination. Hey. I've only got one man. That's not enough. Hey, light him. Now hold it close. Put it right under my nose. What are you so nervous about? Give me that can. Uh, careful. You want to mess up the floor? What's the matter? I've forgotten the combination. It's 10, 20, 30, 30. Here, I'll open it. Here. Ten. Hold it closer. Will you get it? Here, give me it. Do you want to make yourself sick at your stomach? Give me that. Why, you crazy? Give me that, you dummy. You want to blow the joint up? Somebody must have turned the gas on. Oh, well, are you hurt? I never felt better in my life. Addington, how did you look safe? Certainly they're safe. Haven't I been guarding them? Oh. Ah, the electricity's on. Looks like they wiped out a whole crime wave. Pick them up, boys. I'll have to congratulate you, fellas. Rewarding these crooks will amount to a fortune. Reward? Yep, they've all got a price on their heads. I caught this here lady running away with this here box. The jewels. 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 Why, Duchess, would you double-cross your old psychic sidekick? Jewels? Ha! It's the detective's lunch. Here's another one, Sheriff. Just found him under the sofa, and he was still kicking. If I'm not mistaken, your Buffalo Blackie was a smuggler. And you've been using the basement of this hotel for a storehouse. Basement? I didn't know he had one. Come on. Well, I swan. Can I have Mary now? Tell me, Papa. Shall we give our little daughter away? Certainly. We'll get another one. Twelve o'clock and all's well. <laughs>